Good morning and welcome to World Talks here on TVP World, where every word matters. I'm Diana Skaya. October elections won by the Georgian Dream pro-Russia ruling party have been contested by the opposition. Now, following the Georgian prime minister's controversial decision to halt the country's EU accession talks, thousands of protesters have taken to the streets in major cities. These demonstrations were met with a violent crackdown by police, and the country's president has vowed to stay in office. What, so what's next for Georgia? To discuss the unfolding situation, I'm joined by George Melashvili, founder and president of the Europe Georgia Institute. Good morning, sir, and thank you so much for being with us here on TVP World Talks this morning. Well, I can't say it's a good morning, but morning it is. So, George, before I mean we get into anything else, take us through, please, what is the current situation on the ground with these protests? How are these demonstrations unfolding um, since the past few days, um, from last night, today? What is going on right now? Well, it has been a sleepless night, definitely. It was a very violent night again. The illegitimate government resorts to illegal means. They're trying to silence Georgians who are fighting for the constitution of Georgia, who are fighting for the European choice. We've seen lots of scenes of violence. We've seen special forces without any markings, without any affiliations, beating protesters, trying to frighten the people. We've seen lots of threats from the ruling party. And in general, the situation is not ideal, definitely. We're witnessing outstanding resilience of the Georgian people. We're witnessing the Georgian public who is protesting not only in the capital city, but also in Batumi, in Kutaisi, in all smaller cities, the cities that have not seen protests so far. The government is uh, trying to invite more police from the regions, and we've seen police vehicles coming to the capital city. And definitely the police has been using excessive force against peaceful protesters. We've seen water cannons that have been um, also mixed with pepper spray. That's a very tough combination. It makes breathing almost impossible. We've seen riot police taking the Roman formations against protesters, and we've seen the protesters attempting to build barricades that were then overran by the police. That is the situation right now. The police has been trying to crack down all the time, and they have not been successful tonight. They were able to um, take the streets in the vicinity of the parliament, but the protest continues. The protesters who stayed there overnight moved to closer to the Tbilisi State University, that is the location, together with the Batumi State University, where the protests erupted originally. And the people are coming in bigger and bigger numbers. The demonstration yesterday was bigger than the demonstration the day before. And despite these crackdowns, despite the violence that you're witnessing on screen, the people are coming in bigger and bigger numbers. George, tell me though, what are the possible outcome of these protests uh, in the near future and of course in the longer, uh, in the longer term, in short term and long term? Well, the demands of the protesters are very obvious. It is uh, elections that needs to be implemented uh, in a more professional, neutral way. The main demand is a new election. The Georgian Dream Party, it is trying to utilize the Belarus scenarios. They're trying to break the spine of the Georgian public. They're trying to eliminate the willingness of the Georgian public to protest. But they're not very successful, as we're witnessing. The protesters are becoming more and more creative. Uh, and the police is getting more and more violent. The cases of attacks on journalists are a very, very clear indication that the ruling party does not want these events to be broadcasted. They're trying to hide as much as they can. Uh, the propaganda machine of the government is very coherent, and they're trying to hide all these facts from the people who are watching um, the most popular channels. So what do you We've mean by seen hiding? Yesterday. Sorry, George, let, let, let me interrupt you there. You're saying that they're hiding. Um, so what, I mean, what is the government uh, do? I mean, how is the government responding to these uh, protests that are becoming quite, uh, quite frankly, completely uh, uh, chaotic? 
The protests, well, what the government is trying to do, they have a very strong propaganda machine. This propaganda machine is not broadcasting the levels of violence. That's why yesterday the people were protesting in front of the Georgia's national broadcaster. And eventually they were able to get airtime. And they demanded these uh, videos, videos of police brutality, videos of police violence, of police beating people who were lying on the ground to be broadcasted live. The biggest propaganda channel, Imedi, it is trying to spin these events. It is blaming radicals. It is inventing conspiracies and doing, uh, trying to portray the protesters as radical minority who is trying to, uh, who is who is fighting against the, the the constitutional order, which is of course not true. The protests have been peaceful, and all the cases of violence were originally instigated by the brutality from the police and the excessive use of force as has been reported by the OSC, ODIR, and other organizations as well. So that's what the party is trying to do. They're trying to create parallel reality with where nothing extraordinary is happening. They're trying to, um, to, to gaslight the Georgian public. And that's what Georgian Dream has been doing all along. They have been gaslighting the Georgian public that somehow Georgian Dream was coming closer to the EU. They have been gaslighting Georgian public that everything is fine. And this gaslighting is continuing even now, even when we're seeing all of these videos. George, now, uh, President Zorabishvili said that she is going to uh, keep her role as president despite, of course, uh, Georgia's newly elected parliament saying that it would choose her replacement on on the this, the 14th of December. Now, how realistic is this scenario? What could happen in between? The president has already announced the creation of a council with, together with the society and political parties. This council will be announced probably later today. Um, since both opposition and the president consider the parliament illegitimate, the parliament cannot select the president. So it makes sense that the only legitimate institution in this country, which is right now the president, remains in power. Um, the Georgian Dream will, of course, try to proceed with the selection of their presidential candidate, whom they chose from the most anti-European, most anti-Western political group within the Georgian Dream Party. Originally, Georgian Dream tried to create an anti-Western political party, and this party did not show any electoral results. They would not be able to uh, crumble over the barrier. So they, the Georgian Dream had to reintegrate this party into the Georgian Dream again. So that's what they have been doing, and now they're selecting this person from this anti-Western, anti-democratic, anti-Georgian political force to, to be a president who is totally incompetent for this position. So the, the, what the opposition is trying to do is they're trying to consolidate the protest. We've seen public officials, we've seen resignation of a number of Georgian ambassadors, mm -hmm. and I do hope that the Georgian ambassador in Poland will also um, follow the suit because that's the only thing that political appointees, the Georgian ambassadors can do. Uh, and so, this do think, situation so do you think that different. that would, uh, sorry, George, just, uh, you said something very interesting there about all these diplomats resigning, leaving their posts. Do you think that that may have an impact on, uh, on the future of the Georgian elections and, and the entire situation as it unfolds? It has an impact on those people first and foremost. If there is a person who has dignity left, of course they need to resign. We've seen the Georgian ambassador to the United States resigning. We've seen the Georgian ambassador in Bulgaria resigning. We've seen the ambassador in the Netherlands resigning as well. It is a political act from political appointees. And the representatives of Georgia abroad, they are the highest political appointees of this country in foreign nations. So of course we're expecting them to follow the suit. And if the people who are in Tbilisi, who are working for the government, have enough courage to do this, of course, that is our expectation from uh, from the appointees abroad as well. That's what's going on right now. We've seen Georgian businesses also condemning excessive violence. We've seen the biggest telecommunication companies, Makti and Silknet, also joining the suit. We've seen smaller businesses joining the protest and providing the people. So the situation is evolving very rapidly. And the participation of the people who are working for the government, 
We've had, we've seen letters from the appointees from the Ministry of Justice, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, from um, from other state agencies who were all condemning the violence and condemning the pro-Russian turn of the Georgian government. George, you mentioned here, of course, the pro uh, pro Russian here. How do you see the trajectory of Russian and Georgian relations in the near future, given this entire situation, and also uh, given that parts of Georgia, of course, are occupied by Russia? We've seen the reaction from Russian President Putin on the announcement of the Georgian Prime Minister on uh, regarding suspension suspension of of the talks. Uh, it is crucial, and we, we're witnessing it very well, that Russia is very happy with all of it. Russia is definitely supporting the Georgian dream government right now. Their actions, they are pro-Russian by their nature, and it doesn't actually matter whether or not these people are directly controlled from Kremlin or receiving orders from there. What they're doing is exactly in line with what Russia wants. We've seen that the suspension of the U.S.-Georgia strategic partnership being a tragic result of GD's anti-democratic, anti-Western, and anti, uh, anti-Georgian actions. So all of it is a very clearly directing Georgia towards Russia. And George, just very briefly, because we're almost out of time here, is one last quick question for you. How do you think these protests and this entire situation is going to or is already uh, possibly affecting um, the situation in Georgia's neighboring countries like Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, for instance? Turkey and Azerbaijan are less affected because their dependency on Georgia is much less. But Armenia is probably the country which is suffering most because We've recently seen attempts from Armenia to get closer to the European Union. We've seen lots of lots of initiatives, both from the EU and Armenian government, to get closer and decrease Russian influence in, in, in the region and Armenia's dependency on Russia. But Armenia is a landlocked country. The only way for Armenia to communicate with the West is through Georgia. So if Georgia falls to the Russian pressure, it means that Armenia will also be affected in the most dramatic ways. Thank you. As for now... Thank you so much, George Melashvili. That's all the time we have for now. Uh, Founder and president of the Europe uh, Georgia uh, Institute, thank you so much for all your insight. And uh, we will see how the situation in Georgia unfolds in the next few days and in the weeks to come. Thank you so much for being with us here this morning. Thank you for the invitation. And that's all for this edition of World Talks here on TVP World. I'm Diana Skaya. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more features and news from the region and beyond.